Um, hello, my name is Bridget Malone, and I am the Public Relations and Events Coordinator for the College of Science and Mathematics here at Rowan. Um, it's also my pleasure to introduce our Assistant Dean, Jennifer Rivelli, who we are excited to have joining us today. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, today, we have a fantastic panel of faculty and students who will be giving you a glimpse of what it's like to be a computer science student here at Rowan. Before we begin, I have just a few housekeeping items. Uh, our panel will be doing a brief presentation during which all of our guests will be kept on mute with their cameras off but I strongly encourage you to enter any questions you have in the chat box throughout the session. Then following the presentation, we'll have a question and answer period with the panel. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Michael Shilio, the program advisor for the Department of Computer Science. Thank you very much, Bridget and Jennifer, and welcome to everybody here today. Um, um, Definitely uh, thank you for being here. Um, one thing is why don't, uh, a good way maybe to test to make sure the chat's working is how, how about everybody uh, uh, who is in the, uh, who's just been added to our session here who are um, interested in learning more. How about you just type in the chat where you're coming to us from? Because we always like to know where everybody is uh, from, you know, whether it be they, some are out of state, some are from Southern New Jersey or Northern New Jersey, or even my students tell me about the mystical land of Central Jersey, um, but, um, Planet Earth. Okay, well, a little bit more specific uh, than that. Ah, Medford there. Now, Central Jersey does exist. It, uh, it's although they have to fight for their existence here. So, okay. Ooh, Pittman right nearby. We've got some locals, Glassboro. Randolph, wow, okay, we got a, we got a, uh, so it looks like, okay, well, chat's working. And it looks like we've got a, uh, spread kind of from where all, all over the place, which is very good. And that is typical uh, for Rowan University. We have students all over the state uh, and also out of state and we continue to grow. And it's kind of a, a welcoming hodgepodge mix of all different types of students, very diverse backgrounds, which we love at Rowan. So um, as Bridget said, um, my name is Mike Schillo. I'm the program advisor for computer science. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit today about uh, the computer science program. Our presentation uh, is, um, uh, regarding uh, everything that's in the Department of Computer Science, including our two majors and some of our other programs. Uh, it's meant to trigger some questions. Uh, so there's probably, uh, it'll definitely be uh, kind of abbreviated, but make, make you think, hey, I wanted to know more about whatever. Immediately just put your question in the chat and we will, um, we will definitely address all your questions. But I need to say too that I'm not doing this alone. I have some uh, very special individuals helping me out. Uh, Professor Shen, I tell them who you are. Sure. Hi, I'm Professor Chen, and I'm a lecturer in the Computer Science Department. I also am the program coordinator for a lot of our student-centered programs, such as learning assistance, tutoring, um, our co-op and internship programs. So welcome. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, I know Dr. VH might be around. He's coming from in, uh, something else. He might be uh, around shortly later. But most important of all, let's introduce our students. So who wants to go first among uh, the three of you? I can go first. Okay. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Brian Chesko. I'm currently a senior at Rowan University. I'm a double major in computer science and mechanical engineering. Uh, if all goes well, and it looks like it might, uh, should be graduating this semester. So I've been with the department for years. I've been pretty involved in it. I've been a learning assistant, which Professor Chen was alluding to as well. Um, and I've, you know, really enjoyed my time here. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have later. I guess I can go next. Um, I'm Jacelyn. I'm a senior computer science student. Um, I won't technically be graduating this spring because I'm in the four plus one program where you get your master's at the same time and then the plus one year. I'm a learning assistant and tutor and I'm a president of the ACMW of which Professor Chen advises. Thank you, Melissa. And I'm Melissa Hurst. I'm double majoring in computing and informatics and management information systems. I'm supposed to be graduating a semester early, so technically I'm a senior this semester, and I also work in the IT department here on campus. 
Excellent, excellent, excellent. And thank you all uh, for uh, volunteering to be here today. So first thing um, we need to always address is what exactly is the computer science department at Rowan? Because a lot of times uh, when you're looking at different programs, you'll hear terms like computer science or informatics or computer engineering or software engineering. So what exactly are we? Because it's not consistent institution to institution. At Rowan University, it's quite simple. Uh, computer science, the computer science department, we are software. Electrical and computer engineering, they are hardware. So if you're interested in software, you are in the right place. Now, some students say, but what about software engineering? Is that here? That's us. So anything related to the, you know, the hands-on, you know, mechanical, the circuitry and, uh, you know, systems and digital side of it, that's engineering. Everything that's making the things do things uh, through software, that is us. So if that's what you're interested in, uh, especially areas such as um, software engineering, of course, cybersecurity, um, data analytics, and several others, you are in the right place. So um, we, uh, best thing I can say about this department is that uh, these cold hearted evil rotten computer scientists are some of the kindest, most friendliest, welcomest, fun people in uh, in all of Rowan University. And I'm not just saying that. And students, would you agree or disagree? Wholeheartedly agree. Got some great people here. Thank you. Your check's in the mail. Um, no, it's, it's very, it's very true. We are a crazy, wild, fun department. However, let me just say this. We have this reputation. Our faculty will beat you up. We will toughen you up. This is, our programs are uh, quite challenging, mainly because we want to prepare you for the outside world so that you can be competitive so that you can get the career of your dreams. I mean, that's, you know, we, we are all dedicated to the intrinsic value of education and knowledge, but we also know that you want to have a career someday. You want to have a better quality of life, and that's what we really stress here. Uh, one of the things you'll see all over our website is that um, the department has uh, won an ABET accreditation uh, from the Accreditation Bureau of Engineering and Technology is what that stands for. Uh, that's a big fancy uh, term that's not probably doesn't really mean too much to you now. But one of the things you have to um, uh, one of the things that you have to be aware of is you never know where life's going to take you. So obviously in the Delaware Valley, everybody's heard of Rowan University and maybe some areas about, but imagine that you have a phenomenal opportunity in Wyoming or Montana or Arizona or outside the United States. Have they all heard of Rowan University? Probably not, but they all know what an ABET accreditation is. And they also know how difficult, incredibly difficult it is to earn, which means that your, uh, our department essentially is legitimate and respected among other computer science departments. So one of the special features of Rowan University is that we have very small class sizes, gigantic three, four or 500 uh, seat lecture halls do not exist anywhere on Rowan's campus. So we only have smaller class sizes, which means lots of one on one contact with faculty members, a lot of direct interaction. Uh, now, that is a double edged sword because, on one hand, yeah, you can get the extra help and you can get the extra, uh, you know, kind of the extra uh, you know, knowledge imparted onto you, but also you have nowhere to hide. It kind of forces you to be engaged and stay moving in the uh, uh, within your course of study, uh, but absolute small class sizes at Rowan. Uh, another uh, special thing about Ro all of Rowan University, and especially computer science, is over the past 10 years, uh, Rowan University has invested more in professional academic advising than any other institution in the United States. Uh, to the degree where the entire institution is covered by professional academic advising, uh, which I am a professional academic advisor. So my goal and the goal of the other advisors in the department is to do everything that we can outside of the classroom to make sure that you get to whatever your goals are. Obviously, your goal is to graduate as quickly and efficiently as possible, but to also set you up as best that you can so that you can get the career and, and, the, and the quality of life that you desire. Uh, in addition, we have faculty mentoring. So obviously, you are not going to say that, okay, I'm going to go into computer science so I can be a computer scientist. What is that? What exactly do you want to do? Do you want to work in cybersecurity? If so, do you want to do, or do you want to be a software engineer or, or, you know, maybe you're interested in AI or machine learning? Well, who can I talk to about this stuff? We have direct faculty mentoring. Faculty can, will kind of take you under the wing and show you, okay, here's what you want to, here's what you might want to be interested in, courses that you might want to take, areas that you might want to consider uh, to find out what you like and also more, just as important, what you don't like. Furthermore, uh, we uh, included in our uh, open house documentation that we offer tutoring for all of our uh, subjects, which they say, wait a minute, why do I need tutoring? That's for stupid people, isn't that for dumb people? I don't need tutoring. Tutoring at Rowan 
is really nothing more than immersion, immersion in your, the material that you're studying. For example, programming languages is a term of reason that we call them languages, just like uh, any uh, uh, world language that you would study. The quickest way to learn is full immersion. Well, that's what tutoring is at Rowan. So if you're trying to learn Java, immerse yourself in it, drown yourself in it, uh, look at it from, uh, hear from it from different individuals multiple ways, and that's how you get stronger as a professional. So that's something we do take seriously. And it's all this is completely covered by tuition. It's not anything extra that you have to add on. One of the things at Rowan too is that there are a lot of offices both inside the department and outside the department that are designed to help students. And we definitely enjoy kind of a holistic collaborative approach in dealing with students. So there's a lot of things that you can take advantage of and we do everything we can to make sure that you do take advantage of them so that once again, you can be successful, particularly when it comes to the career search after the fact there. Um, and that's our big focus, particularly uh, in the coming uh, semesters is really pushing that career piece. We can move on here from Dr. K, uh, working with students on robots. So let's talk about a little bit about our program. So I'm gonna get, give a quick general overview of the programs. Now, some of you are gonna have a million questions thereafter, throw them in the chat as you think of them, because we'll come back to it. So uh, the computer science department at Rowan has two, uh, ac two uh, academic majors. One is the Bachelor of uh, Arts in Computing and Informatics, and the other is the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. So uh, which one's fresh? I'll talk about the BS and CS first. So the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science is what we is a program that will teach you all the ins and outs about theoretical computing. So it's understanding kind of the not just coding, but why the coding works as it does. So you're doing a lot of algorithmic theory. You're even going to cover uh, some areas such as assembly language and some of the more um, you know, higher level thinking uh, areas that develop out of uh, discrete mathematics, even covering aspects of software engineering and also heavier on the math side. Uh, after which you would be able to, um, to uh, take a couple of elect uh, four electives actually, to learn specific areas of computer science, or you can cluster them into what we call concentrations. And we have a whole host of concentrations we can talk about later uh, if you're interested. But this is kind of the guts, the core, the why behind computing. Uh, so the, the inner core. Now let's contrast that with the outer core, which is the Bachelor of Arts in Computing and Informatics. So computing and informatics, as opposed to the theoretical end, deals more with what we call the applied end. So it's more of the how and the what behind computing instead of why. So while you'll still learn how to code, you will still learn a coding um, as opposed to primarily Java as you would in the BS and CS. In CI, you're learning how to code in a much a whole host of languages. So it could be Java or C++, Python, R, Ruby, Swift, if you're into Apple, whatever uh, you really want to, uh, you have interest in. But you also deal with what we call the applied side of it. So you'll be dealing with things like networking. There is a database component. There's a web component, a cybersecurity component, a mobile component. Um, and it's much more on the how and the what. Now, the reason that we made it a, a Bachelor of Arts, and some of you may be wondering what's the difference, because every institution has a different definition. Rowan, it's pretty simple. Uh, the bachelor, uh, a bachelor of Science, we require you to take more specific classes, even though you both need 120 credits, regardless of uh, the degree, you have specific courses, more specific courses that you need to take with a Bachelor of Science. Bachelor of Arts, you have more freedom to choose. In other words, free electives. Now, the reason that we made it such is that computing informatics is designed to be applied to another field of study. So in other words, you can combine it to a, uh, you know, say that you've always had an interest in English. You wanted to be an English major, but you also like the tech side, you can do both. I have another student who wanted to do historical document web archiving, did history and uh, did history and computing informatics, no problem. Uh, we have another student doing disaster preparedness and relief management uh, with, sci uh, with a cybersecurity concentration and CI. So another combination, or Melissa, who has decided to uh, combine it with the business route. Uh, she's done uh, management information uh, systems or science, depending on uh, uh, how you call it, with computing and informatics. Now, one of the uh, cool things about uh, the CI um, double major pairings is that you can earn two majors, complete two majors in only four years. And the combinations cover so many other uh, major programs on Rowan. In fact, we have more major combinations with the CI possible um, 
than any other institution in the United States. And a lot more of these are going to appear uh, online soon, particularly the entire College of Communication, some of the other hard sciences and quite a few others. So definitely a, a lot of different ways you can apply that. We also have some minor programs as well as concentrations and things like that's a very short list of the concentrations there. Uh, data science, cybersecurity, uh, AI, um, gaming and visualization, crypto and blockchain, uh, mobile app, and there's a whole host of others. A bioinformatics, if you're interested in computing for health professions, which is a spectacular area. So um, think about questions that you have right now about that. You can throw them in the chat there, but and we can talk about uh, other details of concentration um, therein. So um, we can we can move forward, I think. Okay, now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, we do have one of our students just uh, earlier mentioned that uh, what we call the accelerated degree program or simply we just abbreviate it the plus one. So uh, this is graduate school. Now you're saying to me, why, why are you mentioning, you know, we're coming into undergrad. Why are you mentioning grad school now? Well, uh, for those who do very well in the early stages of undergraduate, you actually have the option of taking some of your graduate courses as restricted electives for uh, uh, your bachelor's degree and then staying an extra year and essentially earning a bachelor's degree and a master's in five years, okay, which is a massive cost saving. Okay, it is definitely an option that we provide for you. Um, there's different options depending on whether you're in computing and informatics and um, which computing informatics has a, a bridge to bioinformatics, also a bridge uh, developing through business administration, but also for the uh, BS and CS, you have, of course, the master's in computer science or data science. So this is something that to think about right now, but it is an option and is a really becoming a more popular option for students uh, to knock out a, a master's degree in five years. Definitely a cost savings and definitely, uh, you know, can give you a little bit of a edge in the job search and in terms of positioning there. We can go forward on that and like I said, put through down your questions if you have them. So, like we said here, um, we are really going heavy and you can even look, a lot of this is on our website. You can see that we're going heavy into the career search. We are the career prep for students. The biggest problem that students have, they always say, oh, I can't find a job because I got the wrong degree or it's, it's some, you know, it's so I, I should have chosen this. I should have done that. No, 100% wrong. Simple reason, students that are struggling, I'll say this, graduates who are struggling to find employment, I don't care what your degree's in. It's because you didn't take the steps the students didn't take the steps for the career preparation while in college. And when does that start? Here in the in CS department, it starts freshman year now, okay? So um, uh, Professor Shen, as in uh, she runs what we call the learning community, we will start insisting, actually it's an assignment, that you start putting a resume together. You start linking with Rowan's Career Center. You start looking, even if you don't know what you want to do, there are steps that you can take right now to start the career search while you're in school that way, you will have a leg up on everybody who's waiting till after they graduate. That's the problem. And plus, a lot of, a lot of say, oh, well, these are entry level jobs that want experience. Well, that's why we're also doing a greater per, uh, push for internships and also well, the best kept secret at Rowan, the co-op program. We do have a cooperative education program. How it works, actually, I've been babbling for a little while. How about Professor Shen? You want to tell us how the co-op works? Sure. So. It's an optional program, and if you want to go out your sixth semester, so basically the spring semester of your junior year, you can apply for a co-op at one of our partner organizations. And while you're out working full time, so typically you go out in January and you work through the summer to like July or August. And even though you're out on co-op, you could still receive academic credits so you're getting paid to work full time and then you're also getting academic credits at the same time. So you're still considered a student. And then when you come back from your co-op, you basically um, fulfill your coursework, you get your credits and then you continue on with the program. So, so there's almost no gaps there and you're building your resume at the same time. Absolutely. And a lot of our students who have done co-ops and we have a whole host of partners um, and we actually have some of them listed later and we're in Professor Shen's constantly working to get some more and they're in a lot of different areas. Um, just because of the ease of it and the, and the experience of it, a lot of our students end up working full time, end up in bridging into full time employment after um, they're, they finish graduating from their co-op. So it definitely if you're interested in, um, in um, the, the uh, you know, the co-op partner, and you do it and you and it'll definitely help you out 
uh, in terms of securing that job um, down the road. And some, you know, if you're not interested in it, well, then you just learned, okay, this is a thing I don't want to do, but it's still on your resume. And now you have professional experience, which once again, uh, gives you a leg up and helps you be competitive with that. And obviously I, as and the other CS advisors, will kind of, we help uh, guide you through the process starting freshman year, but freshman year, even coming in, even before college, you want to start thinking about uh, some of these uh, things. So we can move on. So, oh, so actually some of these are some of our co-op partners, but this is where a lot of our uh, graduates uh, end up. We've, uh, some of our partnerships are ASRC Federal, Lockheed, Martin and Cooper, of course. Uh, but a special note, um, American Water is one that's jumped uh, very recently, but especially uh, Professor Shen and I were both in a meeting with a whole host of, of alumni, which we're acting like it, we were surprised to hear, but we probably shouldn't be too surprised at, of how many of our graduates are working at Amazon. They've ended up as Amazon uh, doing very well for themselves. So we do have a lot of alumni connections and a lot of times what happens, I mean, it's everywhere from Amazon to Google to even uh, some of the big retailers. We have some, I have a student working in, um, who just got hired working in cybersecurity for Target Core, another student working in database management for Kohl's Core. So you think about the application of uh, computer science, it's everywhere. I mean, I'm gonna pick on Cooper right now. Uh, well, think of it this way. If anybody's been in the hospital, hopefully nobody's been in the hospital lately, but have you ever been in the hospital in, in the past few years, you notice they're not exactly carrying clipboards around anymore. Everybody has tablets. They're walking around with tablets. Uh, well, some, you know, they need to be handled. They need to be administered. They need to, uh, you know, be uh, maintained uh, and all of that. So that's one side. All of it will also, uh, all that will also involve, um, you think about it, some database work because pretty much everything related to patients uh, requires uh, some database knowledge, but also all of it's HIPAA protected. So you need cybersecurity. So that's three different areas in a field that's not necessarily a tech field. So in terms of application with computer science or computing informatics, really the sky's the limit. But in terms of a lot of you might be saying, okay, this is overwhelming. I don't know what I want to do. That's okay. That's where we're here to help you. It's okay not to know, but it's not okay to put it off and wait. We like to get you thinking about it immediately right through the door. Um, and we have a whole, you know, we, we have many more partners other than these. And that's something um, uh, you can learn as we go and we can move forward. Okay. Now we always talk about uh, research to those who are interested. Now some will say, okay, why, you know, this is nice and all that. I might be interested in it, but why? What, what does that really mean to me? Research is a chance for you to really be on the cutting edge because you know you think about the textbooks you use, the stuff you've learned. At some point, the knowledge stops, the knowledge base ends, and that's where research come in to create uh, to create the new knowledge. Now, uh, in terms of uh, some of um, what our department does, a lot of what they do research-wise does find its way into the classroom. So if we can, uh, we can move forward um, here up. Oh, so there's Dr. Lobo and Dr. Balaga, um, who've done a whole host of stuff prim primarily uh, with the per uh, uh, Perka Lab um, and have um, won what we call uh, so National Science Foundation and in NSF are the big grants, but there's other grants uh, that faculty um, win to help bring some state-of-the-art stuff into the classroom, which is also something uh, to help you enhance your resume and also enhance your skill set, stuff that you could say in an interview. Um, we can move forward because I think it was Dr. VH on yet or no? Did he jump on? I'm here. He is, and he's doing a great job answering some questions. As I thought it was Mirakian. Uh, yes, that's my son using my, my computer last, and he was uh, changed the name, so I can't figure it out. Unfortunately, the for whatever reason, I saw, sorry, Mike, for interrupting you. I saw that our meeting is tomorrow. And I didn't see the message until after three. So as soon as I saw it, I jumped in. Sorry about that. I think uh, I think uh, Dr. VH, he was playing games maybe on his son's computer. Yeah, sure. Trying to hide. <laughs> so, I... Dr. VH, would you just like to give us a very, very quick, more uh, formal intro of yourself so formal. our students know? About myself. Uh, sure, I can actually, this is the slide that talks about what I'm doing. So uh, my yep. name is Vasily Hnatesian. Obviously, my son's name is Markian Hnatesian. <sighs> and uh, so I usually go by VH. Um, it's easier to pronounce and uh, <laughs> easier to remember. So uh, I have been in the department since 2003. So it's what, almost 18 years now. Um, my area of expert, so I run pretty much, I 
run with help of Mike, Cha, Jack, and others faculty and advising runs the department and they been tremendous help and I rely on them a lot. So um, I responsible for everything the department does. All the questions uh, that students, faculty, staff have, it's pretty much comes to me. Often I don't know those questions, so I direct them to Mike or <laughs> Professor Chen or, or Jack. Um, before I became department head, my area of expertise was uh, computer networking and network security, uh, quality of service on the internet, TCPIP uh, protocols. Uh, recently, I switched to, I started working more in the area of statistical and machine learning. Specifically, I'm working, I have a collaboration with Bristol Myers Squibb that have been going on for, I would say, at least seven, probably going on eight years. We have had roughly, I would say, at least 30 students at any point of time who worked with us. Usually, students work on development of software. For pharmaceutical purposes so we, we work closely with let me turn on my video sorry i apologize for that i forgot um so we work uh, closely with bristol myers squib on development of algorithm and implementation of various features uh of software features for the software that they use specifically in the area of drug discovery and uh, pharmaceutical applications um, at present, we have right now, we have nine students working with us, all of them are undergraduate, three of them, three or four of them have been with us at least two years, and we just recently hired five more. Um, so that's about it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely a good, and, and I see Dr. VH is always working um, with, you know, students on research, as, as you know, several of the other uh, faculty members. Once again, it's a very short list here. Uh, it's definitely a great stuff to have on your resume, and even a lot of them especially uh, definitely looks well when grants are involved, because what that says to employers is, okay, you know how to, you know how to earn money, and if you're a good earner, I mean, that's, that's you, you know, something that looks spectacular. So definitely something to get uh, take advantage of. Now, many other institutions will say, okay, well, you have to wait till you're a junior and you have to do X, Y, and Z, and you need to have to, you know, fill out a 20 page form and all this other kind of crazy uh, stuff there. For Rowan, freshman year, you're allowed to uh, engage in research. We allow you right through the door freshman year. And uh, that's something that you'll learn how to do in the uh, in the uh, learning community class. So that's one advantage to Rowan. We let you start, get it, get it. Why not get it what you're interested in right away or discover what you're interested in or maybe find what you hate. Cause I always tell students, look at everything because you're not gonna like more than you like. And that's the only way you're gonna find out what you really wanna do. So you see Dr. K there, her bread and butter is robotics. Um, not listed, there's Dr. Hidari, who's uh, um, all things cybersecurity, which is, I mean, it's, it, that's, I don't even need to, you know, only a fool doesn't think that's humongous today. Um, Dr. Breitzman's there, who's uh, big with data science, data analytics, uh, if you've heard of that. Uh, so yeah, and there's, and there's several others. So um, you, this is kind of generally thought about what you might be interested in. You'll definitely have a taste of everything, but something will click better than something else. And then that's kind of the area that you want to go. Because like we said, we don't want just want to get you to a job because like, we get you a job anywhere. We want you to have a career, something you're going to truly enjoy doing and be able to do for a very long time. I mean, one of the things that, you know, parents usually laugh when I say this, but it's true. And if I'm wrong, everybody has position. Uh, you know, at the end of your careers, you have permission, if I'm still around, to slap me in the face. But I'm going to be honest with you, most likely, think of your parents and guardians. You, the way economics and the way life's going, you will be working longer than that generation. So you have to be doing what you love. You have to be doing what you enjoy. And we will do everything we can to help you get to there. So thank you, Dr. VH. We can move forward. So undergraduate research, actually, let's go forward to that. May I just add a couple of things? Go right so, ahead. Uh, about hiring. So um, I, I know it because I go through the process semi-randomly at least once a year for the students hiring. So for my research group, we usually look for students at least sophomore. Uh, freshman, it's a little bit too early until you, unless you have very extensive um, programming background because effectively what happens, we stick you right there into middle of uh, development. And he said, here's a program, let's try to figure it out. But we're looking for students who around sophomore, maybe second semester sophomore year. Why is that? It's primarily because we want to work with us for a while. 
first semester or so, first half a year, maybe even a year, it takes time to adjust. Uh, so we introduce all of our students in our research project to the tools that are being used in industry, from uh, Juniper nodes to GitLab to whatever else uh, needed, uh, PyCharm, whatever we use at that particular time, Visual Studio software is provided. So you get to work with tools that actually extensively being used in industry. You get to work on the projects that extensively, that currently being used in industry. Uh, so we do pay students. And I think right now starting salary for our students was about 12 hours, 12 dollars per hour. But most of the students that we hire don't do it for money. I mean, yeah, money is great. And you get whatever is 400, 500 bucks a week not going to make or break break you it's not going to be that much help what is the biggest help is experience and note on your resume uh, so a lot of students uh, actually end up putting on the resume that hey you you work on the project for bristol myers Squibb, which is one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world i think number three or number four mm -hmm. or you work uh, for google or you work for lockheed martin on a, on a research project that actually carries a lot of weight Mm -hmm. And usually when you graduate and go uh, work, uh, apply for a job, the curriculum in all institutions is pretty much the same. Data structures, networking, cybersecurity, senior projects, it will be the same. They're going to glance on your, uh, and your list of courses that you took at your GPA, but that's not the most important thing. Most important thing, what you can do and what you have done. So uh, things that you would want to show is, hey, I work on this particular cover collaboration and some of the code that I develop is available on a GitLab for anybody to see and here's the link. This is what will make you different from all the other applicants. This is what will secure you a job. The fact that you can show that you have done something and that you're capable of accomplishing tasks that actually will help you to secure the job. Most of our students don't have trouble with getting the job. Um, they gain hired in fact like it and ASRC, our close partners, they want our students, they beg for our students, they hire pretty much everyone. Okay, I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but they hire, they hire a lot of our students. Yeah. And if you apply, I would be surprised if you're not going to get a job. Typically, when I ask students if do you have a job, they said I have multiple offers. <laughs> That's true. And the only the only time when they don't have a, a job if they they didn't apply. So uh, right now our being a computer science, it's a major where if you enjoy it, you will be probably the luckiest person in the world because you get to do something that you like and you're going to get paid for it. So I I stop right here. So no, that's it's and no, and it's it's true. And yeah, now and like Dr. VH said, there's different levels now. You know, there's others that do um, other projects that do uh, um, that are open to freshmen. Some want junior, some want senior, some want graduate. It's all different depending on the faculty member. There's a lot. Uh, that's another important thing, though. Some students say, "Oh, could I do?" Can I work on multiple things? Yes, a lot of our students do. That's the only way, once we said, you're going to find what you like. But you know what? We've been all talking about this. Maybe we're the wrong ones who should be talking about fun stuff that we're all doing. How about, let's throw it to the students. What are some stuff that you've done that you want to share with everybody? One of the fun things that we like is, especially at the end of the uh, curriculum, I don't know much about the CNI curriculum as much as I do fun. the CS curriculum. But for CS specifically, um, there's a bigger focus at the end on like, like Dr. Vich was saying, actual projects. So for example, the software engineering class that I just got through, um, we worked on a semester long project and we were working on kind of like a financial budgeting app that we could use. And, you know, that's the kind of thing, just like Dr. Vich was saying, you can put on your GitHub and you can say, here's a link, look at what I actually did. And you can go over and explain everything. And now this semester I'm working on a senior project, which is essentially the same kind of concept where you work on the whole semester an actual project with a team right now my team seven people and we're working on something that's almost like a spotify clone so these are some nice actual projects you can work on uh, that are built already into the curriculum of course you can also do things with professors outside the curriculum and that's something you should too if you have that kind of availability Thank you, Brian. You know, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. That's uh, that's my fault. Both this uh, computer science and computing informatics do have a project capstone at the end, which is your chance to actually do something from the ground up. Um, uh, and actually, you actually can get your hands, you know, absolutely uh, involved in doing not just curriculum like Dr. H said, but actually doing something real, which is they're real projects that 
uh, employers need done. And we have those partnerships there. Um, Jason or uh, even Melissa, any, anything to add or even with the whole double major combo, what you're focusing on with that? Um, I would just second what Brian said about software engineering and senior projects. I think it's been really valuable to me. Um, my project sponsor for last semester of software engineering was Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. So again, that's another resume booster if you get a good partner for what you're working on. Absolutely. Melissa, what is stuff you're leaning toward with the whole double major there with the uh, MIS? So, and goal Actually, to... explain what MIS, because some of people don't know what MIS is. That's a... <laughs> so MIS is Management Information Systems, and it's out of our business school at Rowan. I decided to pair the two majors together because end goal for me is to do project management for IT. Okay. So I figured these two majors were perfect for that. Okay, perfect. Very cool. So we can, um, so we can move forward. If, if you don't mind, I'll just add two, two more things. Go right ahead. We're, we're uh, so uh, just to echo that both majors have project-based uh, course at the end. So computer science has senior project. Computing informatics has actually CNI capstone course. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about CNI capstone course, it's basically all your curriculums and the major kind of prepares you for that. You start with a bunch of programming classes, CSNP, ISP, advanced programming workshop, then you take uh, databases, then you take web programming, then you take networking and cybersecurity perhaps. And that all culminates in this capstone course, which effectively will rely on your knowledge of uh, web design, databases, programming to actually implement something practical. And this semester, just uh, as uh, one of the students pointed out, there was a Lockheed project. So BMS will sponsor one project in uh, software engineering this semester as well. So hopefully that will be successful. It's the first time we're doing it. We usually work separately. Thank you. So we've been uh, talking for a while. Um, I don't know, uh, was it Revelium, uh, Bridget? Yeah, I think maybe it's time for the students to talk. Let's see uh, what questions do we have in the chat that we can answer here. Actually, I think Dr. VH is... <laughs> On top of everything, but let it go to his um, head. Great. <laughs> That's why we call him the see. department head. I do have one. I see one in the chat box. Sure. Um, what are the requirements for admission to the computer science department? We get that one a lot because that gets thrown. That gets thrown. So this is then this can be a little bit confusing. So uh, we are housed in the College of Science and Math. The College of Science and Math is neither a restricted nor a competitive college. Um, those that are restricted or, or competitive, that is, you get admitted to Rowan, then you have to do extra stuff to get into the college. Those that are are the College of Business, uh, Education, Engineering, and then Fine and Performing Arts. Um, the College of Science and Math is unrestricted, which means that if you get into Rowan University, you're applied, you're accepted to Rowan University, you can be a computer science or computing informatics major, no problem. There's no special privilege or anything else that you have to do. You could just change your major. Uh, the only question that comes off is what about things like the SAT or placement? That's placement determines where you'll be in your first uh, set of programming classes, writing classes, and math classes for both majors. Uh, that's something that we will, um, the advisors will work with you on once you can't come in there, but you'll get that uh, through admissions. But in no way, shape, or form does that, there is no barriers to entry. So once you're in uh, Rowan University, you can be either major or you can switch back and, you know, switch back to one major to the other, other to the uh, uh, one to the other. And if we we're talking about both majors, if students are saying, well, which one's for me, I don't know, that's okay. That's what we're here for to help you uh, find that out. So um, um, I uh, think this a is question. a good. Good. Um, I'm sorry, Jennifer. Did you want to go ahead with the question? Same time. Simultaneous. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we have a, a a good question that I think maybe, you know, I'm not sure who the best to answer this. Maybe the students. Maybe um, Mr. Shillo. What amount of time do most freshmen spend in schoolwork a day, and is it possible to work to be a, and be a CS major at the same time? Oh, let's torture our students with that question. Yeah. What, what do you What do you guys think? No. May I jump in? So how about this? I will give an answer that I think is right, and then students will disagree with me. <laughs> okay. Let's provide some entertainment. So unwritten rule, for every hour you spend in class, you should spend three hours at home studying. So this is unwritten rule. Uh, in reality, it's probably not that crazy, and it varies. Uh, during the start of the week, maybe uh, start of the semester, maybe it will be easier. 
during the end of the semester, it will be harder somewhere around midterms will be you have to spend more time. But I would say at least if you take in full load, it's at least 30, 40 hours, I think a week, it's like full-time job. Can you work as well uh, during that time? Yes, you can. Uh, Roman University, if you're working for Roman, Roman allows students to work not more than 20 hours a week uh, during uh, academic year and not more than, I think, either 25 or 30 during the breaks. So by default, it implies that Roman University believes that you can work at the same time as you study. Uh, so full-time job, if you have full-time job, it becomes much, much harder because it's very difficult to to find the time to take the classes and our cs program why we offer a gazillion of sections uh, we don't advertise that you can uh, do our program in the evening it's very very difficult is it possible theoretically maybe uh, but very difficult uh, so the answer is my guess 30 to 40 hours on studying yes it is possible to work at the same time Students, please disagree. I agree with everything you have just said. I take 18 credits. I've been taking 18 credits a semester and I work about 20 hours a week at the IT department. And I definitely think it's good to try to work on campus because the jobs on campus can really accommodate with your class schedules. I, I will also agree. Uh, you can definitely work um, as you study. Um, it's going to depend on a couple of things. One, uh, the amount of credits you're taking in that semester, uh, the specific classes, especially like there's some classes that will require not much studying outside of class. And there's some that'll take twice as much as others. Um, it, it really does depend, um, but it, it's definitely doable. And another thing to mention, I guess, with that is like Dr. VH was saying, about night classes. Uh, not every class is offered every time, so it may not necessarily be that even if you can study that it's going to work out um, schedule-wise. So just make sure beforehand you know what your schedule is going to look like. Um, but it, it's definitely doable. Uh, a lot of my friends have done it. I've done it. You can work at the same time. Yeah, we always, um, we it is possible, but um, it's something that you, it's something that we will talk about a little bit more. We don't, we don't want to be too cl you know cliche because you'll hear it a hundred times. All oh, time management, manage your time. It's important, but the reality is it is, and uh, a lot of students will put themselves you know may you know who don't listen to that can put themselves in the jam you know working versus school. And I we always say while we understand you know it's it's important you know you know I'm not, we're not going to say money's no no factor that's just silly of course it is but sometimes students we want to make sure that even if that's the case you still have the priority if your goal is to finish the school and, and finish school and you know end up in a career that you like you kind of have to for lack of a better term keep your eyes on the prize with that do not don't falter with that and sometimes students uh have those issues that's something we're advising can come in with a little bit of um help there but working on campus is an excellent opportunity because keep in mind that's also professional experience you can put on your resume so that always uh looks good there was a question i believe in there what i guess there... one more thing i just re remembered something go ahead so, um i just realized that until pretty much this semester until next semester we never advertise that you can take complete your uh, degree in the evening. And that's actually absolutely true for CS major. However, just recently we were asked to develop our CNI major fully online. I just realized that. So technically, um, so technically you will be able to complete CNI major while fully working, having a full-time job completely online. Um, my guess it will become available probably fall 2021. Uh, we're right now working on developing a bunch of courses online. So ju I just realized that that's actually changing, right? Thank you. And I, um, I think there was another question about um, 
what um, what options are there? I um, oh oh wait, oh, Doctor uh, VH already answered. Man, he was good with that with gaming. Let me add to that gaming question. Um, you know, some say, well, should if I'm interested in gaming, should I do CS or CI? Well, that depends on what aspects you're interested in. If you're into more, say, the writing and and uh, that's level of design, or even the businessy side of it, CI is the better option. If you want to develop a new, um, you know, physics engine. Um, you know, that, that you're going to use, you know, you're going to need your linear algebra, you're definitely not need, going to need to be, or even on the AI side, you're going to need to be uh, the BSCS. Furthermore, Rowan does offer, that's uh, our partnership with the uh, our College of Communication, they offer a, a game media uh, design, a certificate of undergraduate study that covers the other aspects. It's, it's uh, um, a partnership um, which uh, between, let me see, it's radio, television, film, the art department, writing arts, and a few others so that you can do things like focus on audio, focus on some of the writing aspects, or the biomedical visualization, because a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the technology used um, in modern gaming is also used uh, in certain non-invasive surgeries in terms of the visualization and all. It's kind of crazy, but it's very true. Um, so there is, there's definitely a lot of application uh, there with that. So there's a lot of neat things that we are doing on that front. Um, what other questions have I missed, uh, Jennifer or uh, um, uh, Bridget? I'm... I was hoping, Mike, that you could go over a little bit more about what AP scores and credits of you course. accept. Okay. And I believe that I have a little bit more information I can share on the screen. Okay. Um, so, the, oh, that's good. Okay. So this is a question and I didn't, yeah, I didn't, Dr. VH navigated the, the chat there, but regardless, this is a question that we get uh, all the time. What's the deal with AP credits? Because every institution has all different kinds of rules that, yeah, you got AP credits, but they need to fall into this category and this, and only this many you can take and all the best. Rowan, it's pretty simple. Bring them. Okay. If you earn a minimum of a three on any AP test, you're going to get free elective credit which means that it counts toward your 120 credit count for graduation. Now, if you earn a four or a five, it may be able to count uh, and replace a specific class that you have to take and still earn the credits. Um, so let's say, oh, I only got a three on a test. We don't get, bring it, bring it, because that's going to bump you up in terms of your credit amount, which will allow you a little bit wiggle room in your schedule. Or if you have a bunch, you could even graduate early or maybe open up you know, more wiggle room for the co-op or maybe the, uh, the plus one program. Uh, so we had, we had student that was actually able to bring enough credits to actually get a uh, turn the four plus one with a master's into a three plus one. Actually, four years knocked out a bachelor's and a master's degree, which is absolutely um, absolutely crazy. And and uh, there is another thing, the another best kept, you know, in addition to our co-op, 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 not co-op, uh, the best kept secret uh, at Rowan is that uh, something that's exclusive to Rowan with credits is what we call credit by assessment so or credit by examination. This is run by the World Languages Department at Rowan, which is part of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. For students that have proficiency in certain languages, and it can be anything from Spanish, French, German, um, Italian, uh, Latin, um, Japanese, Chinese, and a number of others, Russian, uh, Arabic, uh, students actually uh, paying a very minuscule fee. I mean, I believe it's $75 and then a couple more uh, per credit. It's dirt cheap can meet with a faculty member and pass a simple exam and be awarded up to the the credit level for the ele first two elementary classes which would be a net total of uh, maximum of six credits that you could earn now what's the big deal with this well every to my knowledge i think it's still the case every student uh, who's in uh, k-12 or at least in high school in the state of new jersey has to have a minimum of three years of uh, language i believe that is uh, the case still uh, that majority of students could easily uh, get at least three to six credits just to run at you know why would you want to do this well it's a lot cheaper than say you know taking the ap or dual credits or cheaper than clep testing or cheaper than enrolling in the class now students with these credits um they cover certain gen ed requirements for uh for rowan but also if you wanted to continue onward you could easily very easily earn a certificate in a language or a minor, which is something else that I always call that. That's like a tiebreaker on a resume. That's an extra skill. Even if it's not directly related to your job, it's an extra skill that you have that other individuals don't. Um, but so now, you know, you combine that with say some of you might have that and AP credits, you look, you'll look, um, you'll definitely be in very good shape in terms of um, early graduation or even, you know, open up doors for co-ops or, or uh, um, 
some of the other programs. So definitely something to consider, but that's something that's exclusive to Rowan, very unique to Rowan, and it's very easy to do. And I mean, our reality is, look, if you pay for the credits or you have the skill, you should you should be able to have those credits. Uh, why would we deny them to you? So that's kind of our philosophy at Rowan. Um, good question, though. It was good. Mike, we have another question about cap credits from RCBC. Um, if the um, well, I'll, I'll say about cap credits or any um, anything that's dual credit or anything that was in conjunction with a community college that transfers to Rowan uh, as long as it's passed. Um, it transfers to Rowan as any other uh, community college as any other transfer college credit. Now, uh, do we have to bring our own laptop? Do we get a laptop? And are there specific okay. requirements? So we I, can I. Tag in. Yes, please. So until recently, uh, students did not require to have their own computer to come to uh, to become a CS major. And I, in fact, I think it will be still uh, probably will be still the, the law or the requirement in fall. But we are right now actively investigating and hoping to get approved to allow stu to require students to bring laptop. Uh, to campus. First of all, most of the CS majors, one way or the other, they own a computer. Many of them own a laptop. So requiring to have a laptop actually is probably very helpful. Most of our courses or many of our courses have a practical component. We have only a limited number of lab spaces. So if you, let's say, taking a web programming class, which doesn't need a lab, an instructor wants to run something, some kind of practical exercise, Let's say we look at how to build a website using a specific technology. I don't know. So in this particular case, if students have laptops, they can actually run this exercise right there in the classroom and they don't need a lab space. Uh, so, if, uh, so what we're right now trying to do is ask, require, get permission from the university to, to have all incoming CS majors to require to have a computer, a laptop. So they will be provided uh, their, um, specification of a computer. We generally strongly encourage students to use a Windows PC. Uh, if you want to find out what kind of characteristics, we can direct you to engineering and engineering actually does require uh, all of the incoming students to own a laptop. Their characteristics probably will be very good or very acceptable for CS major. If you have a Mac, is it the end of the world? Probably not. You can run most of the software on a Mac and on a PC. However, the issue with Mac, our campus predominantly is Windows. So there will be significantly less support for that. Uh, and a lot of software that runs on Windows needs some special configuration in order to be run on, uh, on Mac. So unless you're a power user on Mac, I would say, stick with PC. Uh, so as soon as we get permissions, we probably will require laptops, but right now there is no such requirement. Did I answer okay, the question? Okay, so just want to um, let you guys know we're running short on time. We've had so many good questions, but I want to um, introduce um, Teresa Burgos from our admissions department, just so that she can, if she would like to add anything um, to this discussion. And I'm also going to put up this contact page right now. You guys can grab a phone and, and take a picture of that. But Trisha, would you like to add anything right now? Um, so I guess some of our uh, time pressing items, uh, if you are applying or thinking about applying, I definitely recommend working on that as soon as you hop off this session. Um, we are January 31st is our scholarship deadline. So if you're looking to be considered for scholarship, you definitely want to get that in. Um, as long as you have the common app submitted, we can work on getting the rest of your items in afterwards. Um, the second thing I'd like to offer is, um, I know it's been really tough to visit a lot of campuses during COVID, uh, but we just started offering one-on-one -on -one campus tours, um, and I'll provide that link here in the chat box, but we also have um, a self-guided audio tour, which is really nice. You can come on the weekends, you can come, you know, after school, um, and the nice thing is all of the recordings are streamed on, like, you know, the more popular streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, and all of the four stops are, um, spoken by our actual tour guides and you'll get the same content that you would have um, if you were here on campus. So it's a really nice alternative to visit campus. And we definitely recommend doing that. Um, so let me add that uh, registration here in the chat box. But um, yeah, that's all I have. If anybody has questions, um, 
question here. Yeah. So if you um, if you need more information or you have any questions, please, please reach out. We love talking to prospective students and parents. Um, specifically regarding computer science, you can also visit rowan.edu slash computer science for more information. Um, as uh, you just heard, our application deadline is March 1st and um, scholarship deadline is tomorrow. <laughs> so um, we'd like to um, make sure that you know that we are doing the in-person tours in addition to the self-guided tours. Um, and let me move here. Um, and, and of course, and so you're, go ahead. Just Mike. so well you're aware, if you do apply, you know, if you're doing apply, you know, you apply now. Once you're accepted and, and all good, you do have the option, even as a freshman, if you wanted to meet with, you know, ask questions, CS advising, ask questions about your first schedule early. We do allow that. Absolutely, you can contact us. That's not a problem. That way, you, it's always better to be ready earlier. So, absolutely. Great. Um, and of course, please feel free to visit our college website at csm.rowan.edu. Um, I have a QR code on the screen here to make it super easy for you to find us. Some students told me I had to include a QR code in the presentation. So um, I'll just pause here a second if you want to scan it. I just did. So there we go. Did it work? <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah, it Great. It <laughs> um, so so with that, um, we've come to the end of our program. We wish you a very successful college search and hope to see you on campus soon. And on behalf of everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. You. Thank you.